So from there, I want to uh, take it a step further into why cattle and the moon and the crescent were so important to our people throughout our story. And I want to refer to the book Black Genesis by Thomas Brophy and Robert Boval. And the book is it is written specifically to prove that the culture that we call ancient Egyptian was a pure African culture. So if we turn to page 262, he says, from the Turin Papyrus, we can work out that the Shimsu Hor ruled for 13,420 years before the first historical pharaoh who was identified as Means, about 3000 BCE. This means that the start of the Shimsu Hor lineage was about 16,420 BCE, rounded to 16,500 BCE. Could it be a coincidence that this very date of 16,500 BCE is found in the astronomy of the calendar circle at Napta Playa? Now, if we are uh, familiar with the teachings of the ancient culture that we call Egyptian, it is said that they were established by a group called Shemsu Hor. And when he mentions the date of 16,500 BCE being found at the calendar circle of Napta Playa, what he's saying is those who established that culture that we call ancient Egyptian previously established this uh, stone alignment at Napta Playa. And geographically, Napta Playa is located in southern nowadays Egypt near the northern Sudan border. So in the same book, if we turn to page 208, it says that the pharaohs of Egypt not only measured their wealth by the number of cattle they possessed, but also were themselves, as were many of their gods and goddesses, identified with cattle. Indeed, without cattle, there would have been no civilization, at least in the way that we understand civilization today. So this is important because just above in the, uh, in the page, the same page, it speaks about how the domestication just a few years ago was believed to have been uh, started in Turkey and other parts of Southwest Asia, as we know about the protocols uh, of this so-called Fertile Crescent civilization, this Sumertamia, as I like to call it. So continuing along on page 209, he says that the Maasai of Eastern Africa are well-known herders who do not practice agriculture, yet their lives are completely interwoven with cattle. The evidence from Napta Playa strongly suggests that the prehistoric people there treated their cattle in very much the same way. Carbon-14 and other dating methods indicated that cattle there were domesticated some 9,500 years ago, making Napta Playa the earliest known domestication center of the world. In Napta Playa, same book, Black Genesis, if we turn to page 13, it says that there are bones of cattle burials that predate Egypt by at least 2,000 years. Okay, I mentioned this because I want to make sure that regardless of what we do, we want to make sure that we establish firmly, without shadows of doubts, that the culture many call ancient Egyptian, we properly know the ancient Bakuma, was purely African and no other group of people were involved in the establishment of the original foundation of the land, the temples, the spiritualities, the practices and traditions it was purely African. With this said, uh, why is it so important that the moon and the cattle are related, specifically the moon and its crescent phase? And this is important because when uh, traveling in the desert, we had to make sure that we had our proper alignments of the celestial luminaries to be able to travel at night. Because in the deserts of the Sahara, the Libyan deserts and whatnot, it's pitch black. And that was the only way that you would be able to get 
around when you had to travel. So on page 114, Boval and Brophy also say that it seems to us that the ancients would have been totally at ease moving around in the dark. You see, so what they were saying was they had an acute knowledge and an acute uh, calculation of the stars predicated on certain stars, the moon and whatnot. And they implemented those teachings and those lessons into their temples, monuments and the things that they left behind for us to interpret. So if we think about what's being said here uh, during that time and even throughout time, the moon itself has been considered both the nurturing and comforting light, which is the mother principle or the cow, and is also considered the dominant light above all others and dominant being equated with masculine principle or the bull. Because as we know, all of our spiritualities and principles were dualistic. There was a compliment. There was a masculine feminine principle to everything that we describe throughout our time. So I want to go ahead and get into the translation and the uses, not only the literal uses, but also the cosmological usage of this particular word that we call kinsu or konsu. Now, the prominent uh, theme throughout describing this uh, particular word is the fact that it traveled like Ra, and it's even been interpreted as the messenger or the traveler. And if we think about it, Ra, most interpret as the sun, travels through the sky. And then if we look at it, the moon also travels through the sky. So now we look at the moon traveling through the heaven, as it says, like Njuti, and we recognize that the earliest known uh, relation of Juti was the baboon with the crescent moon, then we relate that crescent moon to who we call Kinsu, and we realize that we're speaking about the crescent moon, which is related to the bull. You understand? So that being said, the word uh, that I most commonly use for the pronunciation, the proper right knowledge, African pronunciation of this word uh, mispronounced Kinsu, would be Nkunzi. I-N-K-U-N-Z-I. Nkunzi. And this is Isi Zulu, and it specifically means the bull who is stronger and dominates all others. So now, if we continue along, uh, as we know, Isi Zulu and Osa are pretty much the same uh, in their definitions and their languages. Uh, the definition is the same. The spelling is the same. The pronunciation is Nkunzi. So now in Shivinda, again, another southern language of Kukongo, that would be pronounced Kunzi. And it means the bull or a strong male animal, or in particular, the strongest male animal. So again, we're talking about dominance. So then if we take it to the Mashona language, uh, that word is pronounced Ngunzi. And also, an alternate spelling is H-A-N-D-I, but it will be pronounced Kansi. Because as we know, the H is pronounced as an aspirated K, and D, by rule, is synonymous with Z, or S, or uh, sounds of the sort, because they're orally the same. So Ngunzi and Kansi are the same. And this in the Mashona language means bull. And then in Kiswahili, the term Makundi, it means a herd of cattle. So again, uh, giving pronunciations of the original portion of the lesson, which is Kensu, properly Nkunsi, which would be in the north of Kukongo. And then we have the southern languages. Isizulu, Shivenda, Osa, those would be Kunzi and Kunzi. And then we have Eastern Kukongo languages uh, toward the center of the coast, such as Kiswahili and Mashona. And then we have Ngunzi and the term Makundi. 
So again, we see the universality of the usage and the uh, the literalness of the term. So now let's equate that and relate that to the cosmological meanings and associations of the word Nkunsi. If we look at it, the moon itself is the brightest luminary in the sky at night. So by mythological comparison, it can be considered the strongest bull among others because it's the strongest light that outshines the others and it's the largest also. So that would be equated to the strongest bull and possibly the largest that dominates all others. You understand? So by saying this, in Kikongo, the word Ngonda means moon and month because we know the word month comes from moon. So the word in Kikongo, which is Ngonda, is actually the same word for bull in Isi Zulu and the other languages I presented. So this directly relates the word bull with the word moon. So if we take that steps further, in Isi Zulu specifically, there are several words that are relative to the word Nkunsi, it seems, or the pronunciation. So I'm going to present these just so you can have further information to uh, analyze for yourselves and see if there is even deeper and further meanings we can get into. But in Isi Zulu, the word Konza means to pay homage to. And the word Konzi means a messenger or voluntary servant. So I mentioned that because of the messenger, traveler, or whatnot that was mentioned previously. And uh, I can make an argument for why this would be plausible also. Because if you think about it, this being a mythology of astro science, the moon, in essence, is the messenger. Because as we know, and as our people and our family and our ancestors have always known, the moon does not emit light itself, but rather it reflects the light from the sun. So therefore, mythologically, it can be considered or symbolically, it can be considered the messenger of that light. The sun passes the message, passes the light to the moon, and the moon passes that message or that light to us. You understand? So when it passes through the dark, it can be considered a voluntary luminary object. And this is why it is also considered both the feminine and masculine principle, because by it being the giver of light at night, it is considered the nurturing and the giving aspect, the feminine. And by it being the brightest and the largest object at night, it is considered the dominant, which is the masculine. You understand? So from there, 